Right, so at VeeamOn 2022 on the main stage that you can see behind me here, I was part of the technology general session. So what I wanted to do in this video is break down and go into a little bit more detail on the DR for the masses demo that I featured, which is featuring CDP for cloud connect replication. Let's take a look. All right, so what we've got here is the V12 server. Uh, now this V12 server is set up to replicate to um, one of our service providers and the service provider is iLand. And you can see that I've got um, three replicas in play. Now these are a couple of Postgres servers and a VBR server. I'll get to the reason why I've chosen that a little bit later on. Uh, from the CDP policy point of view, you can see here that I've got this particular policy. And this policy is set up to um, look at a tag and the tag is in vCenter. And that tag will basically select any machine that is um, populated with that tag. So I guess the big thing here is that any new machine that comes in and is created um, in this tier one 15 second RPO tag will be automatically added to this particular policy. That's quite an important feature of the tagging. Um, in terms of the destination here, you can see that we've chosen the iLand cloud. This is going to a VMware cloud director. I'll show you the interface a bit later on. Um, in terms of the policy settings, um, we've got the, obviously the source proxy and the target proxy. This is a CDP proxy, which can be Linux in V12 as well. From a schedule point of view, this is where we select the RPO every 15 seconds for a four hour period. And then we want to create an additional restore point every eight hours and keep it for seven days. So that kind of becomes more like your more traditional uh, backup right there. So with that in play, what I'll now show is what I'm protecting. So as I showed on stage at Veeamon 2022, what I'm actually going to protect here is a classic example of a tier one app, um, Veeam Backup and Replication in itself. So the reason why I have chosen Veeam Backup Replication in V12 is because um, this is a front-end back-end in that I've got the front-end running on a Windows box and the back-end is actually running on uh, Postgres, which is a new feature in V12 as well. So if we go to my vCenter, we can see that I'm uh, replicating this particular box here. You can see the tag that's applied there. And I'm also protecting a couple of these Postgres boxes here. So it's a classic front-end, back-end situation. There's even a web interface here, which we are leveraging. So if I sign into that web interface, you'll see that we have uh, the Enterprise Manager, which is also running off that instance. Again, with the back-end being that Postgres SQL server. Okay, and there we go. Um, if I go back to vCenter, the one thing which I didn't show on, on stage was the fact that we have the network extension appliance deployed here. Now I'll tell you what the network extension appliance does on premises. Um, and then also if we go back to the, let's go to the cluster and let's go to the configuration and let's go to IO filters. You'll see here we've got the Veeam CDP filter in play. You can see we've got that on the one host. And we've got that active across those three VMs that are listed. So there are the replicas, that's the, the VAIO um, drivers that are injected in line, basically giving us the ability to, to replicate the IOs in and out on that RPO instance that we've selected, which is 15 seconds. And just to show you as well that we have got this running uh, Postgres SQL here. So again, we've got this connected here. You can see that we're running active connections to uh, the main Veeam backup database and also the reporting database as well, which is the enterprise manager. So just to show you that we're actually leveraging Postgres, which again is a new feature in V12. So why don't we go and break that? Um, and what I'm gonna do to break that is to go effectively here and stop that server. So this again, uh, could be an example of a malicious attack. Some, someone fat fingered something on the configuration any sort of particular failure of a single workload, which is typically, like I said again, the most common scenario that you're going to get over a whole site outage. So what we'll soon get here is the ICMP responses to stop. Just before we uh, go from this screen, just take note of that um, time there, one millisecond, which is basically saying that it's on the local network. It's um, on premises next to the main application server. Um, if we go back to the Veeam instance itself, uh, we shouldn't be able to do any right-click functionality there. No, we're not. And if we go back to the web interface here for the web application, if we refresh that, that's going to eventually time out itself. So it's going to give us an error in a few seconds.
Right, there we go, an SQL server is not available. If we go back to VBR, we should have a similar error message. It has that come up, there we go, it just came up there. So the server is not responding. And also, this Postgres, there we go, so error connecting. So everything's basically disconnected, our application is broken. So now what I'm gonna go do is go back to that V12 server as the policy. We're gonna to go to replicas, and we're gonna choose a Postgres SQL server and start a failover. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna initiate this failover on the iLand cloud. So let's kick that off. And the big thing here to talk about is the fact that the difference between what we've done previously and what we've brought into V12 is the fact that we're leveraging CDP now. Okay, previously it was snapshot based replication, which was a little bit more problematic in terms of, you know, the performance impact that snapshots generally have on VMware environments. But now what we've got is CDP. So CDP here means that we can go back granularly in time into the journal again, based on the policy that you saw on the RPOs. So you can see here I can go back granularly every 15 seconds uh, for the last four hours effectively. So let's choose that latest one there. Let's click on next and let's start this process. So this is gonna kick off a number of different um, operations in the back end. It's gonna to talk to the iLand cloud where the replicas are going to. So if we go to VMware Cloud Director, you'll see that we have the replicas in this virtual data center already. And this is in the organization. Um, they are effectively sitting there waiting to be powered on. So you can see we've got the main server as well. So if I wanted to, I could bring up everything that I am replicating via this policy. But in this instance, we're showing the benefit of the network extension appliance. So let's give this a couple of seconds to kick into play. Okay, so here you go. So we're basically starting the server side settings of this partial failover. And what we are going to do here is we're going to have VMware Cloud Director kick in and it should turn on that machine there. There you go. You can see that machine powering on. So we're basically booting up the Postgres SQL server, that Linux machine. So this should power up and be ready to go in a few seconds. There we go. Almost ready to go. And then while this is being powered on, we're also going to power on the network extension appliance. And this is the actual magic. Uh, that we have as part of this process. So the network extension appliance effectively works to bridge the network from the on-premises end to the cloud provider end as well. So we use a layer two tunnel um, over the internet and effectively that extends the network. So that means that you don't need to do any re-IPing or anything when it comes up. And what we should see here once it actually does the connection is that we'll have the Linux VM hosting Postgres working in the VMware Cloud Director instance talking to the on-premises end, which is running the Veeam Backup and Replication Server. So we're nearly done that part. Let's see what we're up to here. Should take a couple of more seconds to complete this. And what we will see here as well, once this comes on, is that we'll see that ICMP response come back to life. But once this finishes that side, like it's just done, we're gonna go and start up the client side of the partial failover. And that's gonna start up that NEA appliance at the tenant end and it's gonna create that connection, extending that network. And very soon we'll get that ICMP response coming in here. Should happen any second now. And there we go. Okay, so now the big thing here to notice is that from one millisecond, we've gone to 33 milliseconds, which means that we're effectively running and talking to this machine as if it was on the local network. However, it's running on the iLand cloud. So now if we go back to our front end, the web interface, let's go and refresh that now and it should run. So let's give this a second to load. Again, local VBR instance is running on premises. The back end database is running extended on the VMware Cloud Director server within iLand. And there we go. That's fired up, so let's check out our actual application here. So let's right click it, so we've got the functionality here to go and do the, the actions on this particular application again, using Veeam Backup Replication as that tier one application there. Okay, there we go. And finally, let's look back at the Postgres Explorer and we've got the connections back there and doing our thing. So the application is completely back up and running. The only difference is it's running within that uh, VMware Cloud Director instance up at iLand, extended. That's the partial failover. So 
that's a really good example of what you can expect in V12. Again, this is nothing different in terms of the actual you know, demo and what it's doing from the point of view of clacking and replication. The only difference now is that we're doing it with CDP at that granular level, right? So that means that you're going to be able to protect those tier one workloads with CDP with clack and replication. One of my favorite features coming in V12, and it's great to show you a preview of this at VMON 2022 and in this video.